Hey everyone, we're going to show you uh, Everide's rack that he had before. As you can see, this is a cutting board. And he just drilled a shitload of holes through it and clamps, pipe clamps. And that's the actual rack. And we'll have to find some footage. I don't know if I've got any, but on the St. George, when we were going down to the Grand Canyon, this thing was popping up and down like this. And uh, he, had, he had two gallons of tank, excuse me, two gallons of gas back here, just flopping back and forth like this. And it got to the point where they started, they started turning over on him, and the, the gas started going down his cornhole, burning his O-ring up. So <laughs> that's why we're making his own rack system, because this rack sucks for these DRZs. They don't hold in place. You put any weight on them, they're all over the place. So we are getting rid of this for Everride. We may or may not get him a new cutting board, but we're going to build him a nice rack system. It's going to be solid as a black man's, and we're going to make it look good. It's going to be heavy duty, going to be redneck approved, awesome stuff. So say goodbye to this rack, Mr. Everide. He's gone bye-bye. Full in the garbage. That could be your new workshop table. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, hey everybody, uh, welcome to the new episode. Um, we are going to build a custom set of racks for Everide's bike. A custom set of tight racks, as he says. Um, so what we've done is we've kind of considered, we've spent probably, I'd say no less than an hour or two trying to figure out how we're gonna do this. And what we're gonna try to do is we're gonna try to build a modular system, which means we are going to try to build a system that stays on pretty much all the time. It's going to carry a roto pack lengthwise like this right up above his fender. Um, that way, um, for most of his riding, he can just have a nice narrow little piece to try to, to uh, carry his fuel or his, uh, his storage pack. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to build a way that you can actually add or take off the side pieces so that um, he can have his uh, other packs out just like this on the sides. But he's probably not going to need that all the time or want that on all the time. So we're trying to build it, we've designed a way we think that we can actually remove these side pieces and the side pieces of the steel off to remove some of the weight and then he can put it back on when he wants to. So part of that whole design thing we didn't like about his other rack is he had pieces that come down and have to bolt into these side pieces of the subframe and it loosen up and he couldn't get to his uh, you know his air filter real easy you know taking his uh, seat off was hard so what we've decided to do is we're going to use some other bolts down inside of here and we're going to build the supportive rack underneath the fender so nobody even sees it so right here where that bigger bolt is, we've actually drilled that out to, to accept a 5 16 fine thread bolt. Uh, there's going to be some shear force on this. We want to have a little bit more sturdy of a bolt to hold that weight. And then what we're doing is we're just about ready to tack up. We built a bracket that fits up underneath this fender. And it's going to be hard to see because of the light, but we built a bracket that attaches to those bolts on the inside. And uh, we've custom made uh, pieces to come across like this to hold that weight and this way um, when he puts these bolts in the front rack is going to be mounted to this to hold the hold the, the weight of the rack and he won't have to mess around with the seat so he can take his seat on and off without having to uh, deal with the rack so we're about ready to tack weld that and then we're going to take it out and we're going to make a slight bend in it so that it fits the fender contour real well and then we'll probably have a single maybe two bolts that run up through the bottom and we'll thread right into the bottom of the rack that's going to have uh, tapped, uh, basically just uh, holes that are tapped so he can just bolt right up into it and not have any bolts on the top that you see. And then uh, we'll show you the back part that we have planned here. That's going to be a real custom deal because the bolts that we want, we do not want the subframe to hold the weight. The reason is this bike has an all aluminum subframe. They're easy to bend. And if you hit a whoop wrong or something with all that weight with a side force, it'll bend it and you'll never get it straight again. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to transfer all that load down to the frame, which is this bolt right here. And they're on different places on each side of the bike, so we're going to have to build a custom piece for this side and a custom piece for the other side to support the back of the rack. 
And then those, I think, can pretty much stay on all the time. It'll be kind of out of the way, and he can pack stuff on here as he wants to. And then we're going to build a, a type of spacer that he can bolt the, the uh, roller packs on the sides with. So we'll see how it all turns out. We've never seen anything on a DRZ like this before, so we're just going totally from um, just our own design here. So if you don't like it, homie, too bad. Sorry. <laughs> you can give it away to your brother. Just playing. All right, everybody, uh, we're starting to build uh, Everides racks today. So we're going to show you a little trick on how to uh, set these up uh, from the beginning right. And we actually take this technique from um, building choppers. So have Rojo Neck uh, sort of pan over to the bike that, uh, that I built with my dad. And uh, on those things, they're a ground up build. You have to have everything really centered and balanced to make it ride well. So we're actually going to take that same concept from building custom motorcycles to Everide's bike. And what you do is you tie a, str a string to the center of the head tube. So that's going to be the center of his frame. And then you're going to get behind and you're going to eyeball down that string and try to make sure that you have even spacing of that line down the center of the backbone of the bike. That's the center of everything. So what we've got is two little pieces of tape here on his fender. And we're going to just eyeball this string, make sure it's going right down the backbone, and we're going to make marks right underneath this string, and that's going to be our center line. So everything that we measure for his racks, we want the same weight on the right side as we have on the left side, so we want to make sure that we center that first, and then we'll build the top rack, and then we'll decide how we do the side racks. But how far away they are from that center line needs to be the same on each side to be symmetrical. So I just want to kind of point that out. Good to drill. Five sixteenths holes, just slightly bigger than five sixteenths. They increase the sheer strength of the of the fender, or of the sheer strength of the bolt that's going through there. Put a new bolt in there. It's a bigger uh, 5 16 fine thread uh, bolt that's going to hold the inner bracket for the rack. demonstrating shop safety. Are you guys looking at the blue light? You're not supposed to look right at it. What's wrong with you people? Don't go for the light! 
I see the Stay light. Stay away from the light. It burns. Well, what we got going on here, Mr. Duff Actor? You know, we got this thing figured out. We're uh, starting to build the top rack for Everide's bike. We're uh, squaring stuff up. And we're starting to tack weld this. So we can uh, kind of get figured out exactly where all our dimensions need to be for everything. Got a nice good old square here. Don't look at the blue light. So, whoo! This is a really flat table I used to use building radio controlled airplanes on back in the day. And uh, so I like to use it on this kind of stuff because it's really flat, really square. And I am very square. Very square. Oh man. The helmet got the reflection or something. It's not working. Can't see shit, man. Tack well. It's so pretty. It's so pretty. Fire. <laughs> right next to an aerosol can. Ah! I'm gonna have to straighten this out just a little bit, homeboy. Once we get it going here. Never right, you don't care if it's just like kind of close to you. Okay, it's just kind of close. A little bit off. That's pretty good. Oh man. There we go. happens when you get your uh, ball too close to the hole. You weld it to itself. Fire, fire. And that's how to properly get a fire out. Stick your finger on it. <laughs> when it burns, you stick a finger on it. Okay. We have tack welded. A rack for Everide. This is this first part. Like I said, ooh, pretty square. Not bad. Very, very fixable. Yep, now we start straightening it out. This baby essentially is going to fit. Right there. So we up a little bit in the back. And uh, we're going to have a bar going across here to pull the rotopax mount. And the rotopax is going to sit right on top. It's going to be bolted underneath here so you won't see any bolts because it'll come up through the bottom. And we're going to have a piece coming down here, eventually making its way down to that spot. So we're making some headway, guys. Not too bad so far. We'll see when she's all done, though. This is just step one of 1,500. <laughs> oh, yeah.